Emily Callan. Welcome to this special episode that we have titled Faith in Crisis, a special interview with Cardinal Thomas Collins, Archbishop of Toronto, on this pandemic, COVID-19. Now, we know for the past couple of weeks, everyone around the world has been experiencing the effects of what we've called social distancing in order to, quote unquote, flatten the curve of this pandemic. We're trying to find new ways, even if temporary, of coping with the loneliness, the anxiety and the grief of being separated from friends and family, co-workers, and essentially life as we knew it. What's more is that out of charity for our neighbors, churches have been forced to close. All of this leaves the faithful with deep questions about their faith life and how to carry on. Now I'm joined today, as I said, with Cardinal Thomas Collins, Archbishop of Toronto, and we're connected via the internet. We're a little bit more than just a couple meters apart, um, but he's here with me to offer some question, answers to some of the, our, our deep questions. Thank you very much, Cardinal Collins, for joining us today. Glad to be with you. Now, as I was mentioning in my opening, churches have been forced to close, masses are canceled. That must have been a very difficult decision for you to make. Oh, it, extremely difficult because we need to come together to celebrate uh, the, the Holy Eucharist. Uh, I know the early Christians uh, said, uh, you know, without the Sunday Eucharist, we, we don't continue. We need to have that. And yet right now we can't. Um, of course, many of our brothers and sisters, because of uh, persecution or distance for many years, are not able to have that either. But we're in that position now, which we didn't think we would we would be in. So it has to be done. And the reason it has to be done is out of our concern for our neighbor. We love God and we love our neighbor, but the two of them go together. And uh, in Genesis, it says, am I my brother's keeper? And the answer is yes, we are. And so for a while, we certainly cannot gather together in groups. That's just a very serious thing. I, I think of places where they do, and then the, 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 spreads, the, the disease spreads very, very quickly. So we just can't do that out of charity and out of justice. Uh, for a while, uh, we continue to have the churches for private prayer, um, and that deals with the issue of no more than 50 people gathering and also the social distance that can be managed, at least in a big church. But now the, I think the, the wisdom, which I certainly totally agree with, is stay at home. And so I think that the, the key is people stay at home. Don't be journeying outward, and for various ways, that's not helpful. Uh, and so that meant that we have to even close the churches for private prayer. And so that's extremely difficult to do, but we have to, during this time of crisis, work our way through that. And we can, we will. The Mass continues in every church. Um, the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass is, after all, offered by our Lord Jesus Christ, mainly. We priests of Jesus Christ simply make it present on earth. And so that vertical dimension of the Mass, which is the fundamental thing, is there. Um, the horizontal dimension of us coming together around the table of the Lord must temporarily be suspended out of love of neighbor. So we must do it. Now you mentioned uh, the fact that uh, mass is still being celebrated. The holy sacrifice of the mass is still being performed. Um, but that it was that is a concern of, um, of faithful is how can we continue to receive Jesus in our daily life? Um, those of us who perhaps have been used to receiving the Eucharist every day or you know even just on Sunday, how is this something that um, we can still participate in uh, while we can go to church? Mm -hmm. Well, this is a, this is truly a penitential sacrifice, and I think uh, we can offer that to the Lord for those who are suffering. But it it cannot be done physically now because of our love of neighbor and our desire to protect people. But what we can do is um, both for for mass and also I think for those people that are people I strong I strongly encourage people to spend time in Eucharistic adoration, to make a holy hour every day if they can. There are many people in our parishes in our adoration chapels who've done that. And of course, they would not be receiving Holy Communion, but they would be spending time in adoration. And then all of us, uh, when we come together for Mass, we receive our, our Lord in Holy Communion. So in that, I think we, well, there are some, until we can do this mm -hmm. truly again, which we pray if we are very diligent in doing all these other things, will be sooner rather than later. In terms of the Holy Eucharist, um, we, I, we can make an act of spiritual communion. In fact, at the every, um, every morning at 7.30 in the morning, 
I am celebrating the Holy Eucharist in the cathedral at St. Michael's. And today I, I looked on our website and I found that we have a spiritual communion prayer from St. Alphonsus Liguori. And so I, um, I simply mentioned that. And I read it out before I physically, in the name of and for the sake of the people of the diocese, received sacramental communion. So what we're going to do is, during that live streaming of Mass, I think it would be probably more appropriate that Father Mark, my assistant, would, at that moment when I am receiving sacramentally, to read out the prayer uh, so that everyone joining in can... It's not sacramental communion. And a live stream Mass is not the same as going to Mass. But it is the best we can do right now. And it is a very beautiful tradition. So we could make a spiritual communion. Uh, I wish I had the prayer in memorized yet. I don't yet. I don't have a copy in front of me. But look on our uh, webpage, the Archdiocese of Toronto, Spirit, COVID section, spiritual resources, you'll find it there. Mm -hmm. For people who are spend time every day in our churches in adoration of the Lord, I mean, obviously, uh, we kept that a bit longer. We could do it, but, but really we can't. We must stay in our homes. Mm -hmm. And so what I, I would suggest is where, wherever we are, even if instead of uh, you know 10 feet away from the tabernacle, we're a mile or a couple of kilometers away, whatever, I even suggest that this is, you know, we turn to the east as this we traditionally Christians have done that as a sign of the resurrection. Well, maybe uh, this is just a thought. Maybe sort of turn towards wherever your parish church is, from your home and then spend the time, make the holy hour of adoration towards thinking of praying towards the tabernacle, the church of the tabernacle, until that day when I hope it is soon, when, whenever it can be, that we can get back to the actual times of making holy hours before the Blessed Sacrament. Yeah. In a way, it also sounds like it's um, it increases our desire for the Eucharist in this time. Yes, yes. And um, many of our brothers and sisters in Christ, for reasons other than the one we are currently going through, uh, are not able to receive Holy Communion and are not able to get to a, a church with the Blessed Sacrament present. We should we should be conscious of their sacrifice. And what is, astonishes me, or you know, well, here's the reality, mm -hmm. that all of us who up until now, anyone could walk down the street, walk into a Catholic church, Mass offered many times every Sunday, several times a day, you just walk in with no trouble at all. And how many of us, sad to say, have taken it for granted? Do we miss the many splendid thing, as, as uh, the uh, poet says, Francis Thompson? And so now is the time for us to say, look what we have missed, look what we've taken for granted. Now it's taken from us for uh, how this reason has come upon us so suddenly, this and out of love of neighbor, and out of responsibility, we, for the moment, cannot do what we used to do. But when we could do what we used to do, totally, with absolute ease, so many, sometimes we didn't really value it. Now maybe we will value this more. I hope so. That's a very good uh, good point. Now we're in this time of life, and you, you, you spoke a little bit at the beginning of this interview about, about being, a, being in a penitential season. And during this time of Lent, there are, you know, more people will make the time to go to confession. Um, but again, this seems to be something that is a bit of an obstacle at the moment, um, that it is impossible, and it could create perhaps some anxiety. What does the mm -hmm. church recommend uh, at a time like this? Well, first of all, there there may be, this is, as, as you mentioned, very difficult now. We, we do have to have this distance and it's very it's all these reasons we all know about make it very difficult uh some places have tried uh, kind of creative things about parking lot confessions and things i i don't know maybe that's a way but i think the the chief thing is that we should regularly in our own hearts make uh pray the jesus prayer lord jesus christ son of god have mercy on me a sinner uh we should and especially in a penitential season ask god's forgiveness for our sins if we're not able to get to actual sacramental confession. However, we might want to, if we would like to go to confession, we might be able to contact a priest who would, we have in our instructions for confession, in our, I think we put out uh, just a while ago, uh, in a location, I would say maybe a room at the rectory or somewhere where it might be possible or somewhere else where maintaining the appropriate distance, uh, one might be able uh, what could and the confidentiality one might be able to go to confession we just have to be careful we don't have crowds gathering for this because that then 
defeats the purpose that we're all familiar with in, in these other regulations. Uh, and so I think just but basically, uh, this is a time for us to live a life of repentance. And uh, it is still possible, uh, although difficult, to receive an individual confession. I will not, I do not see, foresee in this uh, a, uh, an occasion for uh, general absolution. Uh, that might come up, but I don't foresee that. Uh, that you have to be present for that. You can't just sort of give generic <laughs> absolution kind of wherever. Um, in general absolution, one must, uh, before receiving it again, one must go to confession, must do it. The, the normal way for the sacrament of, of reconciliation is one-on-one, -on -one, uh, personal. Mm -hmm. It's a personal thing. You can't do this over the telephone or <laughs> I was through, an e <laughs> through an email or something like that. You know, it's just it's not, that's not the way it is. Um, and so, but we have alternatives. If one's not able to get the confession, we make an act of contrition. Mm -hmm. uh, now, speaking of the sacrament of confession, there are other sacraments as well, um, like the anointing of the sick. Um, in Italy, um, we've heard stories of priests who have contracted the virus or died because um, they were um, they were administering sa the sacraments to people who were ill. Um, now, what do we do in this situation um, for those of us who need to receive that sacrament or, or get a priest to do that for a family member? Mm -hmm. Well, I think we have to look at see what the different situations are. In some ways, it's similar to the sacrament of reconciliation. It might be possible uh, in, in some circumstances. But I think in that case, in many cases, we're dealing with hospitals and with um, with nursing homes and things of that nature. So we would have to, in terms of what is good for all of the people in that, uh, we would have to um, follow what their sensible, you know, their instructions are. It may be difficult because uh, I saw a thing, uh, the last rites given over the telephone or something, I saw a thing, but it's, it was, you can't actually do that. It was another religion, actually. We can always phone, we can always pray, we can always talk. But the last rites involve the, the sacrament of anointing of the sick involves the actual anointing of the sick by a priest. Mm -hmm. And that may not be possible. It may, in some circumstances, be possible following all of the wise and essential, really, directives of the, uh, of the health people. What impact could this, however long it lasts, what impact could this have on, um, on baptism, on marriages, for example, or the holy orders? Well, all of those things, those are, are sacraments which are, are very, very fundamental. And in the, some instructions which uh, I, I issued before this got even more stringent, uh, we have arrangements for really pretty well for all of those. Uh, for baptism, um, it may be delayed a bit, but we, there is, for one thing, of course, in a real emergency, anyone can baptize you know, pour water and say, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit in an emergency. But what we would hope to do is to be able to celebrate the full uh, rite of baptism. Uh, and But it, it might be in a, a time like this need to be done, uh, not in a, you know, 10 people being baptized with a crowd of 300 or something. It might be needed to find another way to do that. Uh, marriages as well. Uh, People, normally a marriage fills the church. You know, you have a lot of people. We can't do that now. But a marriage requires uh, um, the witness of the two of them. And we have, inst we have instructions for this uh, issued by the archdiocese, a smaller celebration of it. For ordination, we're delaying the ordinations uh, into August. We're going to set a date. I haven't got that set yet. We're going to delay from May the 9th to August. I hope and pray that this will be over by then. If it is not... If we get to a point where this is still, uh, you know, God forbid, if this is still going on several months from now, um, then I will uh, simply ordain the uh, ordinance, uh, the, the deacons, one at a time. I will do, uh, we have eight being ordained, I'll do eight ordinations. Mm -hmm. Small, very small, right. with me and the deacon and uh, a, a priest or two, and the family, maybe mother and father or something. But I hope we don't get to that. I hope we can have... A yeah. full ordination with the congregation. Now, what are you, what do you expect priests and deacons to uh, to do in this time? What it, you know? How how do you expect them to respond uh, in this time of crisis? Well, now is the time when uh, under time of pressure, and uh, now is the time to come forward and to uh, go more and more deeply. First of all, to pray for the people. Absolutely, this is our mission. More important than anything else, uh, I expect every single priest to. 
offer the Mass every single day. When the people cannot attend, nonetheless, the Mass will continue. It is Christ who celebrates the Mass. So every single priest and every single parish and every institution is to offer Mass for the people. And uh, that's, that's essential. Uh, also, we pray the Liturgy of the Hours for the people. And I think this is the time to go deeper into the praying of the Liturgy of the Hours. Uh, also, I, it's a highly recommended thing uh, to make a holy hour of adoration. Priests are likely actually to be able to be near a tabernacle. And so now is the time to spend at least an hour every day in praying for the people. So it's also time for the priest to be present in the parishes. Now is the time to reach out, to phone the parishioners, to organize organize the parishioners. This is, we work together, all of us, the faithful, to call people who are lonely or isolated, to arrange the young people of the parish, or maybe any people in the parish, to reach out, to maybe help uh, people who are stranded or in some way need people to go and get medication and groceries and things like that, to phone people who may be isolated, to use Skype to talk with them, to use other forms of, and now is the time to increase our activity as a parish in a creative way, to have apostolic meetings using Zoom and uh, Skype and things like that. We have to follow out of love for neighbor and out of responsibility for the common good. We have to follow scrupulously the very wise, sensible ways of stopping this thing. But have, once doing all of that, staying at home and things like that, there are a lot of things we can do in different ways. And I think particularly there's a time when people get more isolated. So the priests are called upon now and, and the lay people and everyone, we're all called upon now to be more intense, to go more deeply in our prayer, to be more intense and active in our evangelization and our care for the people. Do you think that this will strengthen the faith of uh, people? It's a testing. Mm -hmm. It's a strengthening. I think after we come out of this, many, many, many of us, all of us, in many ways, we'll, we will all have been tested. Mm -hmm. uh, and it will it will show what what happens. I think it will lead us if we approach it the right way to go deeper in our love of God and deeper in love of neighbor. It'll help us to see, as we maybe have not seen before, what is superficial and what is profound. That is an enrichment for us. That will strengthen our life as Christians. Mm -hmm. I am afraid, though, that any people who may have been uh, engaged in their Christian life out of more of a routine or a pattern or a habit or something, but maybe not some of the roots of perhaps, as the Lord said, you know, some seed falls on thin soil and it doesn't take root. Well, now is the time. I think this kind of a thing will, will perhaps lead to people either the roots drying out because they, if they were continuing their faith for reasons not of profundity but of routine, and they, there's no longer the habit of, let's say, going to Mass on Sunday because we just can't do it, for now, after we can do it again, there may be some who fall by the wayside because it was the habit that kept them going, but nothing much deeper, perhaps. So we must pray that people who are in that situation will, in the course of this tribulation, grow strong roots and that it will go deeper and deeper. And so that when we come out of this tribulation into the next stage, we can once again come together and act in as, a, as a community of faith that uh, we will, in fact, be stronger. And I think for most of us that will, but I'm afraid there will, well, there will be some loss of, uh, you know, people who might really find this mm -hmm. a thing that's just, they just begin to drift away. So we must pray for them too. Now, um, we've been talking about how this has, you know, led people to experience a lot of isolation and, and separation. Um, and, and anxiety about uh, about the future. So what should be our attitude or disposition as Christians uh, during this time, during this pandemic, as we're facing a lot of unknown? Well, this is the time when we really realize what's important, what is not. This is the time to realize our trust in God. Um, we're, we're face to face with life, death, you know, uh, the the uh, death, judgment, heaven, and hell. I mean, this is this is it. And uh, you see scenes around the world of extraordinary uh, sadness, of uh, great suffering, and we see in our own community this uh, virus is, is here. So I think it should be, I know the old term, a wake-up call. It should be a time for us to, to look deeply, to deepen our love of God. That's the profound thing. How many like things we've been chasing after that are just ashes? And now we don't have the ashes and the, the things, superficial things have been stripped away for other reasons. We're face to face 
with what really matters. And so that should help us to call us, to invite us to go deeper in our faith, spend time in adoration before the Lord in our hearts and in our in our souls. That's the first thing. And the love of neighbor is the next. That now is the time for us. We we get to we're, we're little islands of autonomy. We're like saying me, me, me. You know, the unholy trinity, me, myself, and I. Well, that's just so cheap and trashy when we're dealing with life and death. I mean, it always is, but we surely this reminds us of that. And so we need to think, well, what can I, how can I reach out? How can I help my neighbor? How can I pray for my neighbor? What about the people who are sick? What about the people who are, are caring for them? Are all those wonderful healthcare workers? How can I pray for them? And maybe I can, by doing nothing, in a sense, there's a wonderful article, and I would think of somebody that when we have a tornado or something, I forget this lady wrote this article, we, we rush, what can I do? Can I do this, do that, do something else to help? Ironically, right now, the best thing we can do to help other people to love is to do nothing, to go home and get out of the way, you know, and help other people that way. While we're home, we can go deep in our love of God. We are forced into that kind of place, and then we can try to pray for other people, and then maybe by phoning others, by organizing our parish outreach to people who need help, we can also show our love that way. So that's what we need to do. We need to love God and our neighbor. It's as simple as that. Any final words of consolation, Cardinal? Well, I think, you know, the Lord uh, the, will be is with us in every storm. Um, you know, that's what we see in the gospel. The Lord is coming out of the storm. That's where he comes. That's where we find him. And I, so I say he is with us through the storm. And we need to, he is always with us. We're not always with him, but he's always with us. And now is maybe a time for us to realize that more profoundly. And uh, realize, uh, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing for joy. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. I like that you ended with the word joy, because in the end, that is uh, that is what the Lord wants for us, is a, a, a full, fullness of life and joy, uh, no matter what we're experiencing in the moment. Thank you very much uh, for your words, for uh, for taking the time, and also for, for providing, for celebrating Mass um, at the Cathedral every day uh, and being present uh, to, to the people of your, your diocese. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. God bless. That was Cardinal Thomas Collins, Archbishop of Toronto, and he was offering us some words of consolation and wisdom in this time of pandemic. If you would also like to know more about how Salt and Light is being present to you, our viewer, in this crisis, you can go to our website, www.saltandlighttv.org, or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We're all in this together. Thank you for watching. I'm Emily Callan.